The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. These 12 Jesus sent out instructing them. <clears throat> brother will deliver brother over to death and the father his child. And children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. And you'll be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? <clears throat> so have no fear of them. For nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim it on the mountain tops, housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for an Asperian? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head, all are numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are more valued than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before people, I will also acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before people, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Certainly as Jesus continues to lead that prayer for us, especially during this church year, and as that same Lord Jesus gives instructions to the Twelve, who are representing the entire people of God, the church, he continues to instruct them on a day which we have come to call Father's Day. And so I wish you and all who are gathered here a very happy and blessed Father's Day. And look at the Father's Day gift that's offered in the Gospel at first. Brother will deliver brother to death. The father will deliver his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. And you'll be hated, all for my name's sake. I don't know about you, but I think I'd prefer to receive a necktie than that gift for Father's Day. To have your own children rise up against you, to have your own brothers deliver you over to death, would certainly not be embodying those things that we would call our family first values that have become the idolatrous divine substitute in our own nation's mores. Sad to say, however, that perhaps it is because Jesus is showing us where our true allegiance is to lie, so that we aren't distracted by those family members who sometimes, in their own overzealousness, can keep us away from doing the kingdom's work. Father knows best, okay, let's just make sure we know which father it is. And you won't need Jerry Springer to prove it to you. We know who our Father is. Our Father is God. He made us, and we are His people, the sheep of His pasture. We come before Him with great joy. We come before Him with thankful hearts. And we come before Him knowing that He is the one who has formed us, who has claimed us, who has named us, and who sent His Son, Jesus, into the world to suffer and die on the cross for us, who rose from the dead for us, who ascended into glory and is returning at the end of time to bring us into the brand new creation. But Jesus shows us that the persecution that we experience as disciples of Jesus Christ is one that's not going to come only from those who are our enemies or our frenemies. They may even come from inside of our own family units. Happy Father's Day. Four. When you are in one town and are persecuted, Jesus says, flee to the next. 
And that does not make you a deadbeat dad, but that makes you one who is intent on going from town to town before the Son of Man comes, boldly and courageously proclaiming a message. It is true, though, that as we consider the persecution that faces us, and as we try to understand the persecution that we ourselves face in our own nation, facing the pandemic of racism, the pandemic of colorism, the pandemic of social injustice, the pandemic of COVID-19, the pandemic of phase one to phase two, the pandemic of our own cultural elitism, the pandemic of illiteracy, the pandemic of warfare, we are continued to cha be challenged by the fact that the persecution can often be scary, the persecution can make us feel afraid, and that persecution may dissuade us from our road of discipleship in Jesus. Today, God has called me on this Father's Day to bring you a message, and the message is clear. It has been said all through the scriptures. It has been said from the get-go in the beginning. It is the message that God has brought through angel after angel. It is the message that God has brought through prophetic messenger after prophetic messenger. And that message is the message of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He says it three times in today's gospel. As disciple is not above his teacher or servant above his master. And as we who are following in the footsteps of Jesus, who are the body of Christ in the world, who proclaim resurrection not just by words but by action, will call the world to action even as we ourselves are persecuted. Jesus says, first, do not be afraid of those who oppress you. And there are those who are always going to oppress us. They think they can do so by removing morality and ethics from our formal education in schools. They do so by bending the rules in our own human resources department at work. They do so by trying to tempt us to believe that the oppressor is always going to win, that with knee and neck, one day we ourselves won't be able to breathe, and that the firing of bullets and arms may lead us into the route where we are afraid to even go out to get takeout food at night. My sisters and brothers in Christ, do not fear the oppressors. Most of the oppressors whom Jesus is speaking about in today's gospel are those who are too cowardly to come out with their plan blatantly. And the same is true for those who often oppress us in the church. They do their work subtly. They do their work in legal formats, and they do their work oftentimes so that they can get legislation passed that dishonor the value of life from the womb to the tomb. They do so in ways that continue to cripple those who are of less financial resource. They do so in ways so that those who are not educated may always find themselves in a hole unable to get out of their own abyss. They do so in these subtle ways behind closed doors and behind our backs because they are cowards. Remember, your oppressors are cowards. Only a coward has to put somebody else down to make them feel better. Only a coward has to put a knee into a neck in order to make a point. Only a coward can't reason with people, but only hurls nasty social media messages of misogynistic, non-graceful words. Only those who are cowards can't stand in the breach and be repairers of streets in which to live. Only the cowards will stand in great crowds and chant, no justice, no peace, while they themselves deny justice to their own family members and their own friends. Remember, cowards are afraid of being found out because cowards are all descendants of the prince of lies. And the prince of lies knows exactly why he is where he is. He was too cowardly to be the light bearer. He wanted to be the light himself too cowardly to embrace his identity as God's creation and instead wanted himself to be God. Too cowardly to recognize that his own nonsense, his own fatal ways, and his own flaws would have him not only removed from God's presence, but would prove to everybody throughout all time and space that his ways are not God's ways and his fate is one of eternal damnation and punishment. The prince of lies, Satan himself, 
will always influence your oppressors, and they will always influence your oppressors to do their work in secret. Well, I have news for those who are oppressors. Your work done in secret, your work done behind closed doors, your work of subtle racism, your work of subtle sexism, your work of subtle classism, your work of denying jobs to qualified people, your work of redlining neighborhoods so that people aren't able to have the same rights and privileges as others, your work is going to be brought to light because your day is over. That which is in the dark shall be brought to light, and that which has been whispered at water coolers will one day be proclaimed from housetops. I say these words to all who seek to oppress the able, all who wish in their own cain ways to hurt and harm their brothers and sisters. Your days are numbered in the name of Jesus. Don't believe that you're going to get our vote when you decide in your own sinful ways to lie to us before Election Day and then double-cross us the day after Election Day. Don't believe for a moment we're going to take this standing da sitting down. We are on to your plan. We recognize just how systemic this sin is. And we, as God's children, are not afraid of being rejected. We're not afraid of being persecuted. And we are not afraid of you. God has baptized us for this moment. He has claimed us for this time. And as he has, all those things that have been whispered in the dark are going to be brought to the light. All those things that have been whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the mountaintop because I'm going to tell you this. We are not going to be afraid of our oppressors. I speak that word to you today, sisters and brothers in Christ. I speak that word to you, Redeemer Evangelical Lutheran Church, a parish of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, where God's people pray. I speak that word to you because I can't control the fact that we will have oppressors. There will always be people trying to put us down, always be people snooping on our Facebook pages, always be people putting nasty messages on our message boards, always being people who will come after you with everything they have. And I tell you in the name of Jesus, you are baptized for this moment. You eat Jesus' body and blood. Jesus' name is on you. His claim is on you. You have nothing to fear. Don't you fear your oppressors. Because if you fear your oppressors, you have made your oppressors your God. And we shall fear and love and trust in God above all things. I am not going to bend my knee before some oppressor made like I've been made, flesh like I am flesh, human like I am human, faulty as I am faulty. But when I bend my knee in worship, I will worship only the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The name into which I am baptized, the name into which you are baptized. And so, my sisters and brothers in Jesus, first, we fear not our oppressors. Number two, in today's gospel, Jesus challenges us not to be afraid of losing our relationship with our Father. He says, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Clearly, Jesus is telling us that if we're going to be afraid of anything, we should always only be afraid of losing the relationship that God has given us through his son, Jesus. And we don't have to be afraid of that. Because that Jesus tells us, I will never leave you, or forsake you. You may have had difficult father figures in your life. Many of you have not had the advantage of even knowing your biological fathers. Many of you have had biological fathers who have failed you. And many more of you have had father figures who have failed you even more. And on behalf of all who have ever failed you, as one who serves you as a spiritual father, I humbly apologize and confess that sin to you. I am not perfect. Only God is perfect. And no earthly father is perfect either. But I can tell you this, that as an imperfect person who is with you on this planet, 
breathing the same air and drinking the same water, that we have a Father in heaven who is perfect, one who does not fail us, one who does not deceive us, one who will not leave us, but one who says, children of the heavenly Father, safely in his bosom gather, nestling bird or star in heaven, such a refuge ne'er was given. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever. Unto them his grace he showeth, and their sorrow all he knoweth. For he giveth and he taketh, but God his children ne'er forsaketh. His the loving purpose solely to uphold and restore and heal them pure and holy. That is the promise of your Father to you. The wages of your sin is death, yes, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You might be a laughing stock to the world. People might make fun of you, make fun of your name, make fun of your hair, make fun of your skin, make fun of your accent, make fun of your name, and they may make fun of your earthly father. But I'm going to tell you, they may call you a laughing stock, but there's a day coming, hallelujah, when the last laugh is going to be on the oppressor. The last laugh is going to be on those who thought that we don't have a father who can pick us up, who will rescue us from the grave, who will deliver us from this veil of tears and give us eternal life. The last laugh is the resurrection laugh that says, death, you thought you had us. Sin, you thought you had us. The flesh, you thought you had us. The world, you thought you have us. Ha ha, watch this. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. And he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And because he lives, we shall live also. Don't you understand who your father is? Your father is not some deadbeat dad who's left you on the curb. Your father in heaven is not like earthly fathers who sometimes fail in responsibilities. Your heavenly father is not like some father who lies to you and promises you to get you that pony that you're still looking for for Christmas. Your Heavenly Father knows your needs. Your Heavenly Father meets you in your valleys. Your Heavenly Father redeems your life from the pit. And your Heavenly Father crowns you with love and compassion. And he says, neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, neither things present or things to come, will ever separate you from the love of God your Father in Jesus Christ our Lord. Happy Father's Day, Redeemer. Nothing's going to keep you from your father in heaven. Your father's got you. Your daddy, he's got your back, honey. But he ain't just got your back. He's got your front. He's got your right. He's got your left. He's got your future and your past. He's got your present. He's got you. And even if they destroy your body, as the prophet Job told us, yet in my flesh I shall see God. For if I'm going to fear anybody, I'm not going to fear somebody who can just do something with my body. I might be afraid if I have to sit in front of a barber trying to cut hair and doesn't know how to do it. I might be afraid of somebody who might mess up putting on my press-on nails. I might be afraid of sometimes going to the bank trying to do with that person and counting the change and being afraid. I might be afraid when I have to pay my taxes and do things. There are times when I might get afraid. But you know what? I don't have to be afraid of anything that my father gives me. For my Father in heaven has me with his everlasting arms, and he will heal and restore, and he will not disappoint. And he has power not only over my body, but over my soul. Now what's important to you? Somebody who's going to mess up things here on earth? Let me tell you, earth is all a big mess up. Look around, crying out loud. Nothing but injustice everywhere, on the left and on the right in New York City and all through our country. we got riots still breaking out all over this country. Things are being torn apart limb from limb and left and right. Political ideologies being bantered left and right all around the world. But none of them can destroy what God has given you in eternity. You have an eternal claim with an eternal connection with an eternal Father. And that eternal Father is the one who is going to keep you, hold you, sustain you, and keep you even as they harm your body on earth. Now let me give you a little fatherly word. You may not always get the job that you want. And your spiritual father, Pastor Taylor, will be there and will hold you and hug you 
and if I have to, virtually hug you and air hug you if I have to. I will mourn with you and grieve with you about the inequalities and injustices of our world where those who may be less qualified might be given more opportunity than you. There are times in your life when you are not going to get the house and the apartment that you want to have. There are times in your life where you're not going to make the money that you want. I'm giving it to you straight as a father should to his children. But none of that, my friends, none of that will take away the eternal destiny and gift God has given to you. You are his. They can deport us, they can export us, they can import us, but they will not destroy us because our Father has us forever. And that is Father's Day. So number one, don't be afraid of your oppressors. Your oppressors are liars and cowards, and you are baptized better than that. You're not going to be afraid of liars, Redeemer. You hear me? You're not going to be afraid of cowards. Cowards can't even come up in your face. Don't be afraid of them. Number two, don't be afraid of losing the relationship you have with your Father in heaven. He has loved you with an everlasting love, and he will continue his faithfulness to you. For he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty and say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover you with his pinions and under his wings you'll find refuge. His faithfulness is your shield and your buckler. Better than Purell. Better than a mask. Better than a face shield. Better than gloves that you shouldn't be wearing if you keep touching and, and infecting everything else around you. Instead, my sisters and brothers, understand who is protecting you. Amen? Know the one who knows you and recognize that there's some people on earth who are never going to get convinced. And there are some systems in this sinful fallen world that are never ever going to be put right. But understand that if they take everything from us, take they my life, goods, fame, child, and wife. Though all these things be gone, he's judged, the deed is done. One little word fells him. Jesus Christ himself has you, and he is, he is bringing you to the Father by grace, baptizing you into his death and resurrection and giving you his body and blood. Number three, don't be afraid because you actually are a whole lot better than a whole lot of other stuff in the world. I want to remind you that we are humans who inhabit this planet, this swirling rock in space surrounded by gas, reflecting the sun's rays and causing the sky to look blue, which then in turn makes the oceans and seas look blue as well. We inhabit this planet, but we are not alone on this planet. There are animals, there are plants, there are all kinds of life forms that crawl and creep and hop and skip and jump. And all of those life forms are life forms that God cares about. Life forms that God loves. So much so that two sparrows can be sold for one sixteenth of a daily wage. And if two sparrows can be sold for one sixteenth of a daily wage, aren't you more valuable than they? Let me tell you, you are. You are more valuable than sparrows more valuable than trees and grasshoppers, more valuable than lions and tigers and bears, and showing you that God cares for those little ones reminds you that God cares for us too. We are the crown of his creation. And when he decided to save the entire cosmos, he did not do it by becoming 
a fish. He did not do it by becoming an oak tree. He did not do it by becoming a cockroach. He did it by becoming one of us. For by one human's disobedience, many were made sinners. But by one man's obedience, many are made righteous. You see, from this claim of lesser to greater, we're not afraid because we are more valuable than the sparrows that fly in the air. And they seem to be content, don't they? They're the ones chirping in the morning, aren't they? They're the ones gathering food and building nests, aren't they? They're the ones who are making it through pandemics, aren't they? They're the ones in different colors, some brown, some red, some black, some white, and yeah, some mixed as well. And God cares for them. If God cares for them, God cares even more for you. As he does, you don't need to be afraid at all. Need a reminder? Look at a bird. Follow a bird sometime. Remember, we are bird watchers. It was modeled for us in Central Park a few weeks ago. Persecuted bird watchers waiting for the coming of the Spirit. As it is, my friends, don't be afraid of your oppressors. Number two, don't be afraid of losing your relationship with your father. Number three, don't be afraid that you're not loved. You are enormously, tremendously, given the free gift of God through Jesus the Christ. As we are, my friends, it is high time for us to acknowledge our Father on earth. It is time to acknowledge Jesus before others on earth. That does not simply mean wearing a t-shirt that says Jesus is Lord, but it means, as we heard in today's Come and Get It, proclaiming to the north and the south and the east and the west that Jesus Christ is King and Lord of all. It's confessing Jesus as the one who's the suffering servant who died on a cross for us and rose to save us. And it is sharing that Jesus and his life and his death and his resurrection that will make a lasting difference for people all over the world. As men and boys acknowledge Jesus before others, they will lead their families to acknowledge Jesus before others. As women and men and boys and girls together proclaim they are not afraid of a big bad wolf, they are not in favor of losing police protection, they are not in favor of destroying pharmacies and stores where we shop and where we need things for our lives, they are not even afraid of losing. And they're not afraid of embarrassment. They're not afraid of humiliation. They're not afraid of hanging naked on a cross because they know who their father is. I ask you, do you know who your father is? The commercial used to come on television. It's 9 o'clock at night. Do you know where your children are? Well, most of them have been in your house, getting hair that's really big, eating all the food in your refrigerator, causing you to have to go shopping 15 times a week. I want you to love them, because I love them, and I've told them to eat all the food that is in there and let their hair grow really, really big. They have their spiritual father's permission to do that. I don't ask you where your children are. I want to ask you, do you know who your father is? Because if you know who your father is, stop living like orphans. And stop pretending you got nobody. 
And stop acting like you got to take things in your own hands when your father says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. When your father says to you that he has created you in his image and you dare not ever consider taking a living, breathing, heart-beating human out of somebody else's body because the time was inconvenient for that couple to have that child. Your Father in Heaven values every single life of every single color, of every single hair texture, of every single eye regard, of every economic group and every educational level. As such, then, my sisters and brothers, acknowledge Jesus and point the world to who our Father really is. Then, and only then, my friends, will you spare yourselves from buying yet another necktie or some other gift that will get not used after the first couple of hours. But then and only then, can we wish a happy Father's Day to everybody, even those who didn't like their fathers on earth, and even those who battle with their fathers today, and even those who are embattled fathers, who in the stresses of their everyday lives might be trying their best but feel like they're getting nowhere. We can have sympathy and empathy for all fathers everywhere when we acknowledge Jesus, who directs us to our Father, who is everywhere. He has you, my dearly beloved. He's your daddy. And as he is, know that even family members might work against you on Father's Day, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. So be about sharing the message of love and life. And join me in today's hymn of the day and pray against the evils of society. Pray against the evils even in the institutional church. And pray against the evils even on earth and in the heavens that wage war against the family unit into which God has called you. As you do, do so with weapons of the Spirit. And as weapons of the Spirit are employed, my friends, use that weapon that Satan can't stand. That weapon that causes him and all his minions who oppress you to fall down on their own knees. Use that weapon that no force, systemic or perchance on earth, can combat. God's people pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Acknowledge Jesus. My friends, lift him up for the world to see. For his eye is on the sparrow. You know he's watching me. And as you do, wish our Father a happy Father's Day. And let the summer begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.